Hello dear friends, welcome to the question solving session. This will be based on the prelims 2019 science and technology question that appeared uh, this year and it is a happy news for as far as science and technology is concerned because there were like 13 to 14 questions uh, related to science and technology and I will be solving some 10 questions that was core science and technology. There were other questions also that were related to science and technology but that falls in geography or environment or current affairs. So, uh, 10 basic 10 core questions that came in science and technology and almost all the questions 10 out of 10 questions were dealt in various test series of neoises various uh, you know modules materials classes and etc even even during the live class also many of the topics many of the concepts were covered using which you can feel that this this entire 10 questions were so easy uh, it, it it's not like so easy but still you you can achieve it you can even eliminate many statements and etc so let's solve the 10 questions that came in prelims 2019 from science and technology the first question with reference to communication technologies, what is or are the difference or differences between LTE long term evolution and Vo LTE voice over long term evolution. So, this is basically many times I have we have done in, in test series in section wise test in class also we have dealt with 4G, 3G and different even 5G also. So, we know that both LTE and Vo LTE are related to 4G no relation with 3G even though it is a advanced version of 3G but still it is near to 4G. So, the first statement LTE is commonly marketed as 3G. Is it right? No, LTE is not commonly marketed as 3G. When 3G was there in India, I mean it is still there in India, but when 3G was popular in India, at that time we could not hear anything like LTE or OLTE. So definitely it is not, it was not marketed as 3G, it is almost marketed as 4G. We can call LTE as uh, LTE and OLTE as something uh, 3.95G, not 3G. Okay, 3G is different, 3G is H plus. H plus or H that is that sign is called 3G that is normally marketed as 3G but this LTE is commonly marketed as 3G the first that first part of the first statement itself is wrong and Vo LTE is commonly marketed as advanced 3G no Vo LTE is the first one when 4G was released when Jio released their uh, 4G phones when Jio released their sim card we can see that many almost all the phones in India even though it was 4G enabled it was not enabled with Vo LTE Vo LTE means voice over LTE. LTE is a data only package ok fine LTE is a data only you can you can get high speed internet but Vo LTE means voice over LTE means on superimposing the LTE we can also send voice text. So both phone calls voice calls as well as data can be simultaneously accessed that is Vo LTE. So definitely the first statement is wrong. Second statement LTE is a data only technology ok fine LTE is a data only technology but OLT is not a voice only technology. OLT means both data as well as voice. So, this have been dealt. I, I hope almost all the students, every students are very familiar with this. So, the answer will be definitely D, neither 1, no 2. So, that is the evolution of 1, 2, 3, and G. Next, 5G will be launched soon. So, first generation basic voice service, analog based protocols, etc., etc. Then we have the second generation where internet started. In the first generation, there were no internet. Second generation, there were small GPRS. Uh, all other technologies were started then again in 3G we could see HDMA, HDSMA etc etc et so we could see H or H plus in 3G phones now 4G when when it came come to came to 4G in last year last from 2016-17 we could get almost these things and that time it was LTE or Vo LTE now almost all the phones in India are Vo LTE enabled because almost all the service providers Airtel, Geo, Vodafone, Idea whatever whoever it is they are providing Vo LTE services so that is why the question came and all both the statements are wrong so the answer is uh, what neither one no two very easy question that was okay second question in the context of digital technology for en entertainment consider the following statement so four statements re regarding augmented reality and virtual reality now all, all of you know about uh, if you know if you are watching videos in youtube definitely there will be there will be an option watch it in vr watch it in vr means you need a special device to watch that particular video in VR. VR means virtual reality. You are creating a virtual world in a small device, small, uh, you know, uh, some some kind of a multimedia device which is wearable on the uh, ears behind the head. And Google and Amazon, many many companies, many multimedia companies are launching their own VR devices. So we can see like it is hardly like five thousand, six thousand rupees per piece. So uh, regarding that, if you know what is virtual reality, see first statement in augmented reality. A simulated environment is created and the physical world is completely shut out. This is the statement for virtual reality, not augmented reality. Now, second statement in virtual reality, the images generated from a computer are projected onto a real life object or surroundings. 
So when we are talking about VR, just like a specs, we are wearing a device and we are seeing everything inside it. So that statement should have been the first one. So first one is the definition of VR, not augmented reality. So augmented reality, what is augmented reality? You know the game Pokemon Go, Pokemon Go where inside the phone we have to search for Pokemon Go's and we will be going there. We can see virtual images inside the phone and that will be projected somewhere near the surroundings to make that augment, to augment that surrounding for many almost all the uh, recent phones that have been launched, the camera phones, Oppo, Vivo, Realme, whatever it is, uh, OnePlus One they are improving their AI and augmented reality inside their phones to enhance the camera and the video shooting, the 4K recording, etc, etc. So that is the, these 1 and 2 statements are actually reversely placed. So both 1 and 2 are wrong because that should have been the reverse. Then third one, AR allows individuals to be present in the world and improves the experience using the camera of smartphone or PC. That is augmented reality. Fourth one, we are closes the world. Yes, we are, we are closing. In VR, in virtual reality, we are wearing something and you are closing the entire world. Entire world, whatever we are seeing, that is seeing inside the device. So we can, when we, whenever we put the VR, then we, when we see, then what we see, we see a different world. We can see movies, we can see games, many games are there. We can travel around the world in a virtual reality world. So that is the third and fourth statement are correct. First and statement should have been reversed. So even if you don't know about anything, still you can apply some logic and definitely you can arrive at the answer B. 3 and 4. So this is this is augmented reality, the first image where inside the phone you can enhance the environment what you, whatever you are seeing using a camera or in a phone or a tablet or a PC. Using that you can enhance your surroundment, you can augment your surroundings. That is augmented reality. Virtual reality, see this man is wearing that device. This thing is called virtual reality device and he is seeing the entire different world which is shut actually. So you are seeing a virtual world in virtual reality. So you get down the some some uh, you know, definitions and etc. Pause the video. So the correct answer is three and four. So third question with reference to the recent developments in science, which one of the following statements is not correct? Functional chromosomes can be created by joining segments of DNA taken from cells of different species. So you can say that in recombinant DNA technology, if you have listened to my class of uh, biotechnology where I have taught about recombinant DNA technology, how how uh, BT cotton or BT brinjal is being made. Uh, or, or genetically engineered. So in that we can we, we can see that a DNA segment or a gene from Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria was taken. That particular gene means a small segment of DNA was taken from that bacteria and it was inserted in a plasmid or in, in, in a PCR polymerase chain reaction and it was multiplied, multiplied many numbers of uh, things were there and then what we, what we created many clones of that particular DNA and that was inserted into the plant of in the host in the host plant that is a cotton plant. So in that we are not creating any functional chromosomes. We we were not creating functional chromosomes by joining any two segments of DNA. We are just taking a small gene and we are inserting that in that plant and new seeds will be created. That seed will be transgenic crop. So the first statement is bit uh, grammatically, not grammatically, technically that is wrong. We cannot create functional chromosomes by joining any se segments of DNA from different species. That is the wrong statement. See second, all the other statements are correct. Pieces of arti artificial functional DNA can be created in uh, laboratories. Obviously, Hargobind Khurana is an Indian American, Indian origin American scientist who, who is specialized in, who, was, who is known for creating artificial genes in laboratory like bacteria and yeast. Uh, many artificial functional DNAs were created in laboratory. That is actually a success story. So, B is correct. Piece of DNA taken out from an animal cell can be made into a living cell. Yes, obviously in polymerase chain reaction, what is happening? Polymerase chain reaction is an entirely different thing. It is not a living organism, it is just a reactor where you put some uh, gene or segments of DNA and you can help it to multiply it. Everything is there in the material, so cells taken out from plants and animals can be made to undergo cell division in laboratory petition. That is called tissue culture, so that is also possible. Anyway, A, functional chromosomes can be created by joining segments of DNA taken from cells of different species. That is not possible, so that is the wrong statement here. Functional chromosomes cannot be created, okay. Only recombinant DNAs can be made. Recombinant DNA means you are cutting a small portion of DNA and you are taking out that, you are replacing with another thing. That is the recombinant DNA. This DNA is again inserted into the host variety. That host variety is made to, uh, you know, reproduce and fun uh, offsprings or seeds or whatever is being made. That seed is distributed as GM crop. So, functional chromosomes cannot be made because chromosomes are normally happen, it, it occur inside the body of that particular plant or animal. Artificial gene synthesis is where Hargobind Kurana is famous for. So, this, uh, B, B is also correct statement. D is nothing but tissue culture. So, 
only incorrect option here is A. So that is hopefully I hope everyone got it correct. Uh, so A is the correct answer. Fourth question consider the following statement regarding digital signature. This was also the dealt in uh, information and communication technology class uh, where I have taught about digital signature even in the series also uh, in one or two test series uh, questions about digital signature where they uh, elaborately mentioned in even the in, the in the explanation also elaborately mentioned. So uh, what is a di digital signature? Three statements given an electronic record that identifies the certifying authority issuing it used to serve as a proof of identity of an individual to access information or a server on internet. An electronic method of signing an electronic document and ensuring that the original content is unchanged. So we know that the third, third statement is a definition of digital signature. We know that like we are instead of signing it in manually, what we are doing, we are creating everything digital, right? We are in, in, in a move towards making digital India. Entire India should be made, the governance should be made digitalized. So in that drive, what we are doing, we are introducing digital signature so that the, the, the person who is signing or the authority who is signing that does not have to sign manually to each and every papers, the 1.3 crore population, no need to uh, sign everywhere, right? So what is, it is an electronic format, just put it and paste it here. Some authority uh, certificate issuing authority will be verifying that there are totally nine certificate issuing authority CAs under this controller general of certifying authority and nine uh, like CDAC, DCS, uh, you have uh, this IDBRT, etc, etc, E-Mudra, these are the companies who are uh, public as well as private companies are there who does this certifying authority job. So the third statement is correct actually, it is the definition of digital signature. Now second one, used to serve as a proof of identity of an individual to access information or server on the internet. Obviously that is also correct. If you are a bank manager of your, if you are a village officer or a, or a panchayat secretary or whoever like a government official and there are some people who are authorized to make their own digital signature, not all can do that okay. There are certain people who can definitely who, who need this uh, digital signature to sign every document that is passing from his office like a bank manager or a or a PO or, or a village officer or a village uh, Pajaj secretary, whoever it is. So definitely that sign can be used for an authentication to go into different servers of the government of India. For example, the local self-government website server of the particular state in Andhra Pradesh or in Kerala or in Tamil Nadu, the entire state, that server needs any authentication, not every public can go into that particular server which is meant only for the government officials. So this sign can be used for an authentication for just just like an username and password. You can use this di digital signature. Second is also correct. So you can eliminate two options from here, three, three only and one only can be eliminated definitely. So thing is between two and three and one, two and three. For solving first one, if it is correct or not, let's see this. Uh, the statement. See, digital signature will also contain details of the issuing authority. Who is issuing authority actually? There are three people here. See one person who is the government official, he has a signature, okay, let this be the signature, okay. And this is the subscriber, we are the subscriber. He is signing some document, some kind of a government document to us. He, it needs his sign and he is not manually present because he is in Haryana and I am in Kerala. Then I, I cannot send a courier to him and please tell him that please sign this document and come back. So what we will do, he will convert this into a digital signature. So he will convert, he will convert his signature into a digital signature, how? In electronic format. That will be done by certifying authorities called CAs. Certifying authority, there are totally nine certifying authority that is licensed in India. So he will, what he will convert his signature into a digital format, he will request this CA, he definitely through government channel, he will be requesting this to the CA or certifying authority, there are nine authorities, okay? And he will give, this authority will provide a digital signature. Digital signature is nothing but it will be in the form of like, just like blockchain technology, it will be like in a number codes, like hashtags, some, some alpha numerical codes will be there, encrypted. No one can tamper that, no one can destroy that, no one can make a fraudulent, even if anyone tries to hack that particular signature, it is punishable under the IT Act 2009-2008. So that much is Digital India, that much we are growing in this digital sector. So he has created this using this certifying authority, he created his own digital signature which has two types of keys, private key and a public key. So private key and a public key. Private key will be definitely uh, disclosed, it will be disclosed, it, only this person will know what is a private key because it is using this private key that he will be verifying that this is my signature or not. That will not be uh, given to any other public or it, it cannot be published, that is punishable. There will be a public key 
this public key can be known to the subscriber. So using this di digital signature, he is giving a signature to a normal citizen like me. I am applying for the signature and I got this digital signature. How can I verify that this sign is correct or not? Using this public key, I can do that. In, you, can, you can use this public key and go onto the website of this particular man or this particular office, uh, web, you know, government organization. I can verify that the signature is correct or not. So definitely a digital signature will contain the data of the certifying authority, this man, where he works, which office he is working, what is the designation of this man, etc, etc. So all these informations are provided. So the first statement is also correct. That is a twist in this. Definitely you don't need to go in deep of all this. Just imagine why would they disclose the details about a certifying authority? That's all you need to think. Why should they disclose any information of the certifying authority? It is not a secret agency or something like that. We are not getting any, uh, you know, uh, Rafael papers or uh, fighter jet papers or anything like that. What we are getting is what we, the fundamental right of us. We need that certificate, then definitely we will know about the certifying authority. But there are options. It can be hidden or it cannot be hidden, but still the first statement is correct here. Second and third I have already discussed. So all the statements are correct. That is why the answer is 1, 2 and 3. Almost I hope. I don't know if uh, how many people got this correct, but still that is the correct answer. Third one. Fifth question. In this con in the context of wearable technology, which are the following tasks is or are accomplished by wearable devices? So simple question it is. Wearable devices, we have smart watches, smart specs, uh, smart band, smart arm band, neck band, headsets. Uh, many things are there which is wearable, which is connected to the internet, which is connected to the Bluetooth. You can control anything. You can control my projector, you can control my laptop using a wearable technology. So, nothing, everything is possible using wearable technology. So, one, location identification of a person, why not? You can just place a GPS module somewhere. Like in my watch, I am uh, inserting some, I am buying a watch which is GPS enabled, then definitely a person can track that if I send the information to him. Sleep monitoring of a person, yes, I can keep alarm in, in my watch. So just think of the possibility, obviously that is correct, assessing the hearing impaired person. Definitely there are many devices that will help the impaired person using wearable technology. So all the statements are correct. Wearable, wearable technology, wearables, fashion technology, tech, tech talks, etc. are the names given, fashion electronics are the names given to such kind of wearable technologies. They are smart electronic devices or electronic devices mic microcontrollers that can be incorporated into clothing or worn on the body as implants or accessories. You can even implant that in your body or you can just wear it just like a removable thing. So all the given are examples or applications of wearable devices technology. So one, two, three is the current answer. Very easy question. This one is one of the competing question that came in this prelims. RNA interference, RNA I technology has gained popularity in the last few years. Why? So if you know something about mRNA, a messenger RNA or what is the function of an RNA, in a human body at least, if you have, if you know about, uh, if, you, if you had revised this recombinant DNA technology that was taught, then definitely you can, you can get the function of RNA. What RNA is doing in our, I am taking an example of human body. What RNA is doing? RNA is copying a, a, an, an information that is present in a gene. Gene is nothing but a, a segment of DNA. So the RNA goes into that particular segment and it copies the information contained in the double stranded DNA. RNA will come out, go to the ribosome and will produce a protein. That protein will be uh, that protein production is called gene expression. So when the protein is produced and that protein helps in doing some functions, then that is called a gene expression. The entire thing is called central dogma. So definitely it is used in developing gene silencing therapies. Definitely that is correct. Why? Because RNA interference is a technology. It's a technology, not only technology, it's a biological, natural biological thing that is happening which suppresses or which regulates the expression of certain gene. So a gene will be suppressed or a gene will be silenced using RNA interferences and Many treatments, many therapies, uh, researches have been going on. Many, many therapies have been developed using uh, this RNA interference. So, first statement definitely, why should we eliminate this first statement? That is a question. So, it is used in developing gene silencing therapies. It did not mention that they are already using any therapy. No, no, they did not mention, they just mentioned in developing gene silencing therapy. So, you cannot eliminate that. First one is right. It can be used in developing therapies for treatment of cancer. Why not? Then the last time, the 2018 Nobel Prize was, were given to immunotherapy, monoclonal antibodies, etc., etc. So definitely, almost all the medical researchers, in 90% of the researchers are going on uh, regarding cancer treatment. So you cannot eliminate second statement also. So 1 and 2 is definitely there. You can eliminate B and you can eliminate C also. Now question is between D and A. In D also, there is no 2. So this also can be 
eliminated. Now, how can we arrive at such a situation? See the third one. It can be used to develop hormone replacement therapy. See, hormone replacement therapy does not need any genetic engineering. It does not need, need any RNA or DNA in that. Hormone replacement, using tablets or injection, you can just replace your hormone. Uh, mainly hormone replacement therapies or HRT. They are used for uh, controlling the menopause and men, uh, menopause, mainly the menstruation time. When they were, when they used to be, in many patients, they use, they happen like uh, hormone imbalance and etc. that result in different mood swings and etc. Uh, stress, pressure, you know, many other uh, character uh, problems. So, uh, that can be reduced using hormone replacement therapies and it has nothing to do with RNA, nothing to do with DNA. So, three can be eliminated definitely. So, that we can arrive at the answer A, 1, 2 and 4. Fourth one is definitely right. It can be used to produce crop plants that are resistant to viral pathogens. Obviously, using RNA or DNA, you can produce GM crop. That is the basic meaning of this uh, statement. So, 1, 2 and 4 is a correct answer here. RNA interference is a biological process in which RNA molecules inhibit gene expression or translation by neutralizing. You are suppressing or neutralizing a particular uh, RNA or particular gene that is so that is otherwise called gene silencing. The first statement is right. It is being used in developing gene silencing therapies. The RNA technology helps to regulate the expression of specific genes which is requiring gene silencing. Second, a major field of investigation and clinical trials are based on cancer treatment using RNA. RNAi and gene silencer technology. So, that is also correct. Third one incorrect. Why? Because hormone replacement therapy is a treatment used to relieve symptoms of the menopause. It replaces hormones that are at lower levels as you approach the menopause. So, if there is any uh, hormone problem or mismatch of hormone or imbalance hormone secretion, then you can using tablets and injections, you can increase that hormone level. That's all. It is normally a medication therapy using tablets, injections and etc. So, third statement eliminate. Fourth statement is correct, RNAi can be used to create transgenic plant varieties. So, 1, 2 and 4 uh, is the correct answer, A. Seventh one, which are the following are the reasons for the occurrence of multi-drug resistant in microbial pathogens in India? Almost predicted question about multi-drug resistant uh, because in section wise test test, I have a lot of questions were repeated, uh, not repeated, I mean uh, regarding that topic, many questions were there. So, um, multi-drug resistant is a very problem, very very much uh, concerned regarding our health sector. So, which are the following other reasons? See, genetic predisposition of some people. What is genetic predisposition? It is like based on the environment, your gene, your genetic, uh, you know, information is getting changed. That is called a genetic predisposition. So, you don't need, I mean, a person is not that much living in, in like in 60 to 70 years. His gene won't uh, kind of mutate according to the environment. That takes a long process. It is like evolution. So, first statement can be anyway, anyways eliminated, but still see, see the second one. Taking incorrect doses of antibiotics to cure disease. So, that is definitely there. Taking incorrect doses means unscientific use of antibiotics can help in um, drug resistant bacteria to come up. So, that is definitely there. So, two is definitely there. Using antibiotics in livestock farming. See, uh, in cattle and bovines and etc. If you use unregulatedly antibiotics to treat them, that uh, particular cattle etc. We are drinking the same milk, we are drinking the same, we are taking the same ghee and curd and etc. It will contain definitely those antibiotic and that will unregulatedly enter into the human body which will result in multi So, 2 and 3 is again, 2 and 3 are present and there are only two options with 2 and 3 that is B and D. A and C can be eliminated. Why? Because 2 is not there. Okay. Now, let us see the fourth statement. Multiple chronic diseases in some people. Yes, if a person has different types of like he is having hepatitis C as well as he is having some kind of a, uh, you know diabetes, he is having a hypertension and he is having at the same time he is having some chronic infection in his body. So, he needs multiple drugs. Multiple drugs also will result in uh, drug resistant bacteria growing up. So, definitely 4 is there. So, you can come into a statement D, 2, 3 and 4 because there is no option where 1, 2, 3, 4 are there. So, definitely you know that some statement is to be eliminated and 1 is the elimination because all the 3 other statements are similar and they are correct. So, that is why this question is again, I, I, I just mark it like easy to moderate to difficult. That is the standard of this question. So, one is incorrect. A genetic predisposition is a genetic characteristics which influences the possible phenotype development of an individual organism within a species of population under the influence of environmental conditions. So, under the influence of environmental conditions, your phenotype is getting changed. That is called uh, uh, genetic predisposition. It has nothing to do with uh, drug resistant. It may happen in bacteria, but it is not happening in humans. This kind of a thing can happen in a, a bacteria, 
which causes multi drug resistant capability to that particular bacteria but this question this statement is asked in the perspective of a human being so statement 1 is incorrect all the other three statements are correct thus arriving at an answer d 2 3 and 4 eighth question what is a cas9 very simple question i have lit, uh, literally so many times mentioned about crispr cas9 crispr cas9 and again this crispr cas9 was asked in 2017 or 18 also prelims 2017 or 18 if you have seen the previous year question paper this question was there crispr cas9 yes crispr cas9 is a gene editing technique and cas9 is a protein that helps in uh, making this gene editing happen or uh, successfully you know edit the gene so cas9 a molecular assessor used in targeted gene editing gene editing the term itself is there see all other statement a biosensor used in the accurate detection no a gene that makes plant pest resistant that is also wrong a herbicidal substance synthesized in genetically modified crops so all the other three statements are you know absurd totally absurd a is the correct answer it is directly given cas9 protein is related to a molecular this molecular scissor it has a particular sequence it will cut the dna at particular intervals and you can I, you can take that you can delete that particular gene and replace it with another one that whole technology is called crispr cas9 gene editing technique and the protein used the scissor used the molecular scissor used in that particular gene editing technique is called cas9 so the answer is a very simple question it was ninth one which one of the following statement is not correct hepatitis b virus is transmitted much like a hiv yes hiv is a viral infection hepatitis b is also a virus infection obviously both are having similar qualities any viral infection yes they they will be transmitted in similar way not all but almost all like hiv and hepatitis having many common things even though it is uh, hiv is affecting immune immune system and uh, hepatitis b is affecting liver but still the transmission the way of transmission is almost similar so you cannot make it as wrong then see the c statement globally the number of people infected with hiv hepatitis b and c viruses are several times more than that hiv uh, than those infected with the hiv that is also right because we we can see that uh, b and c vir uh, hepatitis hepatitis means normally there are four variants of hepatitis a b c d a is a normal hepatitis that is not uh, chronic but b c and d are very much uh, dangerous and uh, so more number of patients several times the number of patients of compared to hiv there are in the world so that is also right anyway see the second statement hepatitis b unlike hepatitis c does not have a vaccine that is a utterly wrong question i mean statement because if you if you know about mission indra dhanush mission indra dhanush of india the immunization program uh, you can see that there are there is a vaccine in hepatitis that hepatitis vaccine is mentioned in mission indra so if you know that scheme mission indra definitely you can get that b is a wrong statement anyway this is also a symbol hepatitis b has vaccine and it is included in mission immunization, immunization program within india so b is not correct again a simple question in the context of in the context of which one of the following are the terms pyrolysis and plasma gasification mentioned very simple question if you know the meaning of pyro if you know the meaning of pyro pyro means fire you know that the cremation the, the hindu culture has a cremation of the dead bodies I mean the, the dead people you cremate it right uh, that cremation is also called pyre so pyre if you know about sadi definitely what is sadi the girl the widow will be jumping into the pyre of her husband so pyre means fire yes obviously it is a greek term and if you know what is pyro pyrolysis means burning just burning so which of the following has burning in this waste to energy technologies yeah you are burning the waste to convert that organic waste into some kind of a thermal energy or whatever it is that is called uh, waste to energy technology and pyrolysis is a technology which is burning the waste to produce energy to to heat the boiler or whatever it is you can use that thermal energy to do many functions this is being practiced in the nordic countries in finland and netherlands they are converting the waste into uh, thermal energy that thermal energy is used to uh, you know uh, circulate the hot water and to, into the entire city that is happening in netherlands or finland any any of the uh, some of the nordic countries are having that kind of technology we are also implementing that and plasma gasification what is plasma gasification it's an extreme thermal process using plasma which converts organic matter into syngas what is syngas syngas is a mixture of hydrogen and carbon monoxide so again uh, this is related to waste to energy technologies even though abc extraction of rare earth minerals that is having totally different name not not pyrolysis natural gas extraction technologies no uh, hydrogen fuel based automobiles that is hydrogen fuel cell not not any pyrolysis in hy hydrogen fuel cell there is no pyrolysis happening so 
a uh, very easy question again if you know the word pyro the meaning of pyro definitely you can go to waste to energy technology that was the 10 questions the 10 core question that came from science and technology there were other questions also like uh, which of the following can be uh, done using a satellite a remote sensing satellite all the above is correct then uh, regarding black hole there was a question that is a part of a geography question because it is related to universe so again in black hole what is the main thing that is happening during a merger of black hole gravitational wave so the term gravitational wave is there definitely what is significance of black merger, uh, black hole merging? Gravitational waves are detected. That is the correct answer. Almost the entire 14 questions, uh, except one or two, uh, were easy. You will easily get like 20, 20 or 22 marks from science and technology itself. That is why I am always reiterating science and technology is a very important topic which should not be neglected. So, see you in the coming days. Thank you very much.